Orion over there. I actually held my eyes closed before I joined just in case. I see. So that right there, hold on. Oh, there we go. That star is Beetlejuice. Yeah, I know about the that. Orion Nebula is right over there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. The Pleiades are. Oh, there we go. There's that's ways to the Pleiades. Is that yeah. the moon? Yes. That is. The yes. Moon. Although the moon's actually a little too. It looks like big. a JPEG. <laughs> it's very small oh, looking. No, you my on, me, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. The moon no! is an experiment to hide that we're in a simulation. Uh, uh, I I I I just realized that I should probably tell him that that is actually not just a JPEG Every image. Time it's... I, uh, it's Every time I got planet. closer, it seemed to get farther. That's because that's because that's um a flare. It's an, it's a flare image. So it's Dude, attached you made it to the directional right? light. It's Dude. in the skybox. He made it disappear. Whoa, dude, that's really far away. My picture, I mean, I'm gonna it. My friend actually, uh, in my yeah, town. Also, by the way, if you notice, you guys are really dark. That's because I haven't fixed the light probes. Uh, so that's why your avatar is oh, really dark right that's now. That's why I'm dark. I kind of just went into your house. Uh, apologies you for that. You lied to me. That's this not is, a so, JPEG. Actually, ready? So here's, yep. I'm gonna tell you about this observatory. This is modeled after a real observatory. This is not just me and throwing same around. This is actually modeled one to one. It's not done yet. There's a lot that needs to be done. Uh, one to one of a real observatory. The building that behind us in real life is the ops building. So this, this is where the control room for the telescopes are, where the servers are, the power, liquid nitrogen, all of that jazz yep. would be in that building. And then of course That's you have amazing. the actual telescope there. Does it work? Um, which the it, it shouldn't be that bright on the outside. I I'm still learning lighting in Unity, so that's why uh, that's broken. yeah. But you want to don't worry about it. But this is Follow nice. We're, Follow we're, him. we're literally on a field trip. Oh, we're going through another door. Oh yeah, this is awesome. Ah oh, hell yeah. Ah shit, here we go again. We're in the red room. Ah uh, shit. And then we go upstairs. Everyone, everyone, stop here. Don't uh, yep, wait. Wait yep. to go through the door. Oh, oh damn it! I feel like I'm on a class this trip. Work. Okay, oh, I'll have to fix that. There's a button right here. I think this is a button. No, that's that's. Uh, there's supposed to be a label on it. It's supposed to be the cardinal directions, and that's broken. So I'll have to fix that. Oh, it's broken. Rip. Yeah, it's, it would be it would be showing like north, south, east, to west, showing with direction. So uh -huh. everything you're seeing, uh, although there's a lot missing, but everything you're seeing is based off of real stuff. Again, like I said, it one to one scale. Uh, in real uh -huh. life, this is where the bearing for the telescope would be. All the way to the telescopes on that bearing system right there. And everything above us would rotate with the dome. So when you move the telescope around, the whole building above us rotates around. And these little, like, shelf things uh, hold, hold all the computers that control stuff above us. And they would rotate with really? the dome. And the stairs rotate too. So, uh, you know, fun things. I've been to this real observatory. This is where um, my my university operates or staffs this observatory. So I've been here and I've been trained on it. And real fun thing is going into the dome and it's dark and, you know, it moves around. You do stuff and the dome slews around and you come down the stairs and you had some memory of where they like that, you know, going down these stairs was. And you come out th that door, and it's like, wait, shit, where are the stairs? Because it's like 3 in the morning, and you can't think. <laughs> We're in the back rooms. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, anyway, let's go ahead and go up. We're going up? Whoa. There's more. Welcome to the observatory, boys. I almost fell off. I'm too fast. So, this, is, uh, this telescope is a 3.5 meter telescope. I mean, the mirror is three and a half meters in diameter. Uh, this big thing right here is a spectrograph. So this uh, breaks the light from uh, stars into a rainbow. Oh, I and, did it. Uh, you can oh. get all sorts of information out of that. Nice. Anyway, if you come around to the front of the telescope. I pressed a light button. I don't know if I was supposed to Oh, yeah. That. So, so that light's not synced. You can turn that your instance to be brighter with white light you can press a button over there to turn the light on and it doesn't turn it on for everyone it only turns it on for you oh okay good i didn't want to make anyone's eyes bleed 
Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. That's fine. I want to go to space. So anyway, oh, oh, come here real quick. Trippy. For for I everyone else who wasn't who wasn't yeah. here for me talking, uh, over there. Hey, oh, hold on. There we go. Over there is the Orion Nebula. Techno truck, come on. Jesus. Point at the constellation Orion, and you notice this telescope. I have aimed at it right now. So if we come up, well, actually, I hope this works. Oh yeah. It didn't work. Don't worry, I can fix it. There's oh the picture. That's what it's seen. And uh, for some proof that it's actually working. Uh, this is a texture can attached to a camera. So there's a camera attached in, in Unity. So th th this is yeah. Unity stuff I'm talking about now. There's a camera uh, attached to the mirror. That is awesome. One of the future goals is to actually that animate the whole dome to be able to move amazing. across the sky. That's nice. Uh, I'm and so, gonna have a lot uh, of things to record. See if I can get it to work. That'll probably but be in the It's not animated gigabytes. right now. But probably turn on no clip so. Make Sorry, what? For myself. Uh, if you were to get the whole sky like this, you'd probably have hundreds of gigabytes. Oh, yeah, I would, but I have a trick for how to not do that. Wait, what? Hmm. Someone just took my laser. <laughs> not me, that Wait, guy. I clicked by accident. I was confused. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> I guess something said equip, and I was like, what? In <laughs> a galaxy, so, hey, the, the, trick, the laser is synced for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I got, I got to fix. Although it still doesn't want to rotate when I move my hand, but uh, oh well, I'll it works out later. still. It works. If you come, if you come over here, very nice. Back to the down here. Yeah, yeah. I feel bad. I just jacked your laser. So, really, so because I'm probably not going to animate this telescope for like quite a while there's a lot of other work i'm going to be doing before i get around to like having a telescope move but yeah. as a test uh i put a high-res image really far away so the sky box you see is not what you're actually seeing there i have an image of orion that i put in the right location the right orientation for, further away than vr chat will render for your eyes yeah but the camera on the telescope i can tell it what i want its render distance to be so it will render it. So out. Uh, well, will we over, rotate in the dome, actually? If I can aim this damn thing. Out over there is an actual, there's just a plane, a unity plane with an image on it. And that's what the oh. telescope's looking at. That's what it's showing in the eyepiece. So if you flew Jesus. out there far enough, you'd probably run into it. Yeah, is that a challenge? I mean, if, I if can do you that want easily. to do it, I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> How far is it? All right, I'm going to head out. Uh, I think i don't remember i think it was like four thousand i just i was just like eh, four thousand never mind I, you're probably I, 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 going my, there until morning and shift keys yeah you'll probably be heading there until <laughs> morning but um let's see more fun more fun stuff to point out if you follow me over here with my broken lighting on the balcony yes. but at least it's not lagging as much as it used to oh i have no lag mm. One fun, one fun oh, thing about this virtual fire. observatory versus the real one. Uh, you'd be kicked out really fast if you jumped onto this thing. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one gets out scientific equipment. Nah. So let's see if I can aim this. Oh, oh. If you follow the laser up, do you see that blob? It's a disky blob near the laser. Yes. That's the Andromeda Galaxy. In the skybox, and that is one to one to what the the angular size is correct. That's how big it appears in the sky, Andromeda Galaxy. Really, Jesus. Now, even if you go to a dark sky location, it won't look that good. The skybox is actually a high res export from a thing called Space Engine. So a lot of these details, you'd kind so like if you looked at Andromeda dark sky location, it would you would see something probably. It would look like a smudge. Like maybe like oh there's a cloud over there but it's not it's actually the galaxy you you wouldn't be able to see the disc real well unless you did a long exposure but hmm. if your eyes were really good or you had a wide angle camera and took an image you would find yeah. that it's that angular size is that a which if you notice um oh I have the moon scaled wrong so that moon should be two that moon's two Twice. times bigger than it should be. Smaller? So really? the moon should be half that size and then compare that to the Andromeda galaxy. Andromeda's <laughs> oh. bigger in the sky than the moon is. Jesus Christ. Oh my Christ. god. All right. I like this school Techno. trip. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> now that I'm actually like, trying to put that into like, perspective. To reality, 
So, uh, over there, that it? bright star, that's the North Star. Oh. That's Polaris. And that's really? actually Jesus. North in real life. Oh, hold on. If I can aim the damn thing. Eh. It's that bright star aim over there. Correctly. <laughs> oh. That, I'm getting false oh information. God. Wait a minute. Over there is the Big Dipper. Kind of clipped yeah. by oh, the, the hills. And then uh, that that constellation's Cassiopeia. Nice. So can you rotate the telescope? Actually, you can see actually? the band of the Milky Way up there. Kinda. I only saw that once in real life because uh, the skies are really, really clear. I really cannot yeah, relate can to a given statement. And I was in the middle of the woods, up here in northern Minnesota, well, southern Minnesota. That's without light pollution. Mm. Welcome to Texas. You live in Texas? You have no idea how yes, awesome that is to see it. Damn. And you can look around, and so this sky box, as you probably have noticed, in general, is correct to the real sky. It's actually, this is what the sky would look like midnight in about the fall season so like eh, november december for this look the real location this is what the sky would look like at midnight for yeah. uh you know winter that's amazing so, looks he's ready i still have a, i still have things to fix i still have lighting woes because like this looks like the, the rooftop looks like it's freaking glowing <laughs> so there we go i got i got I things to better. fix still yeah, but I mean, like, for what you're trying to go for here... It's, My it's question is, I've been asking, is, uh, you... are you able to rotate the telescope? Uh, that's the future plan. Oh, I want okay. to be able... Actually, what I want to do is have, um... Script? Either buttons that you can press, like, you know, look at Orion Nebula, look at the Pleiades, and you click the button, it'll slew to it, or, you know, yeah. slew is the term for moving a telescope. Yeah. It'll move to it. Um, or... Even more complex, but it'd be really cool, is to have like a compute, like a numbers interface. You can type in coordinates in the sky, and then I'll just have a list of coordinates of known objects. Yes. So then, how you'd use it is you just type in the coordinates for things, but then it would kind of give you the freedom to kind of just point it wherever. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then at strategic well, points, yeah. I'll put images that you know high res images for particular objects. I'm not going to do the whole sky because that'd be ridiculous. Um. But scan them around, maybe have a list of the known ones, and then kind of leave a bunch of hidden gems for people who go around and see, like, oh, I wonder if I can see the Mezzi object that I don't have listed, and, like, I'll actually have the image. And if someone yeah. bothers to actually type that, look up the coordinates for when they know and type the coordinates Dude, in. Dude, you're doing a lot like, of oh, big brain here. This stuff, this stuff is pretty interesting. It's hurting my yeah. brain. It's shooting. My Hold skull, on. my you're skull. Learning. You're learning. You're learning. I am the things I really need to do are one fix the light, thing in the morning, which has been a never ending struggle. Oh, this is really fun. You're welcome. It is nine um, o'clock. And clock? then I oh, have they, they, people they helping me right now with the model. Of, so, so this dome oh, yeah? is there's a lot more that's inside, near, like inside where the telescope is. There's a lot more that's actually there. And so, yeah, you that's just can't see it, or we can't just see it because we don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, here's here's the thing. Since this is a real place, uh, if you just Google Apache Point Observatory, yeah, you have a red. You can look up the side. pictures of the real location, and there's pictures on the inside. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you can't wait, if you just Google Google the sign. You can find pictures. It's hard to find pictures of the inside of that building, but you can find lots uh, from inside the dome. Yeah, and of the telescope, and of the site in general. Well, I mean, of course. I mean, why would why would you want to like learn so much about the building when you have this huge spectacle of science right here? Yeah, <laughs> and there's and of course the before, and that's the just the immediate stuff to be done. Um, the building, the ops building. I'm gonna have that as be like an astronomy museum, and I'll have a little theater, and we'll have a a one to one accurate scale of the control room for the telescope. It's actually not that big. It's a little little room, kind of like the size that, of an office, small office. That uh, old when I. When I went into that building, it reminded me of the back rooms, and I got scared. <laughs> Is that a challenge? No, like, I... But, um, other stuff. If you look over there, do you see those platforms? Kind of... the back rooms yes. with windows. 
this platform is sitting over there. So more telescopes sit on this platform. So this nearest one, there's a one meter telescope that sits on a pedestal. If you look, if you Google images of the site, you'll actually, you'll see them. Yeah. They're, they're sitting on little pedestals. There's another one. And then out over there, that overhang pedestal, there's a special telescope called the uh, Sloan de Jules Sky Survey that what sits on the pedestal, that little like overhang. Does it look at uh, close by, <laughs> close Earth objects? No. So what the Sloan telescope does, uh, it's a survey. So um, quick distinction, uh, you have survey telescopes and you have standard observational telescopes. This is a standard observational. Uh. How it works is, uh, let's say I want to study something, I want to study galaxies. I actually might be working with some galaxy stuff on this this semester, we'll see. But yeah. how it works is I make a target list. Like I want to look at these galaxies with this camera, you know, with these settings uh, and these targets. And you know, it gets approved. And you do the observations, and you know the next night someone will look at Jupiter or something like that. Sloan is a survey, basically mean the moment the telescope was built, the entire observational run was already decided, and all it does is it just progressively scans the, the entire sky. And uh, there's been various different surveys funded using the same telescope. The first one was an imaging. Yeah. So uh, if you just look up um, pictures of random objects in the sky, there's a good chance, not it, not too much anymore because there's been other surveys since, Yeah. there's a good chance you'll actually pull up an image taken by the telescope that in real, oh, I'm pointing the laser at me, that in real life sits over there. <laughs> um, now, right now, it does spectroscopy, so it doesn't do imaging anymore. It has a, these massive spectrographs, and it will take spectra for many stars at once. Traditionally, if you want to take the spectra of a star, uh, you have to line it up onto a slit. So there's this little slit that you put on the image plane, and the light comes through it, and it diffracts, and you get the, the whole rainbow and all of that. Yeah. Um, but it can be hard to do a lot of targets. You know, you can always, they have to be in a line, for example, or you might use fiber optics, and you, you got one little fiber optic cable. What Sloan does is it has this big backplate, a metal backplate with a bunch of holes plugged into it, and they plug in like a thousand fiber optic cables. Uh, and each hole lines up with a star or a galaxy or whatever uh, the, the project is, because there's several survey projects. And they bundle all those fibers together and send it into one spectrograph. So with one observing, you suddenly get a thousand spectra at once. And you want to look at another part of the sky, you just have a different plug plate, a different back metal plate that you swap out and you take another image and then swap it out and do another and yeah. do another for many years. <laughs> for many and, years, really? Uh, so I, for example, I, uh, for my research right now, I do machine learning on solar populations. I look at data from many stars. All of my data came from that telescope. Um, yeah. which is, I'm pointing at something that's not there. I realize that, but in general, the real telescope that would sit over there, all my data comes from it. And I use maybe 5% of the data set right now. And that's, no, wait, no, it's like 10%. It's 10% of the data set. And I have 500,000 stars in my machine learning model. Huh. So it's a lot. Um, it's actually getting a new lease this uh this year it's starting its next survey mission they're actually replacing the whole back plate now they're using a robotic system so there's fiber optics on these little robotic arms so instead of swapping plug plate plug plates uh they just have a little robot and move the fibers around really it's pretty cool That's i can't nice. wait to see that up and running so we're gonna have uh, better um, clear pictures not pictures it's all spectra oh, um what's that it's so uh Anything that's emitting lights, you know, has it's at different wavelengths, right? So you probably know that sunlight, white light is all of the colors of the rainbow, right? Yeah. Um, if you were to actually look in really high detail at a rainbow produced by the sun, and you look really, really closely, you'll notice there's a bunch of dark lines. There's yeah. spots, colors, very you know, specific wavelengths where there's no light or it's reduced. The reason is that the sun has an atmosphere, and we have an atmosphere. Really? The sun and has when an light passes here. through that, and so when, when light passes through that, different elements will absorb particular colors. Huh. 
And so by looking at where you're missing light, you can work backwards and figure out what was in that atmosphere or on the thing yeah. uh, that produced these lines. So you figure out what it's made out of. That's the pure fundamental of how spectroscopy works. Really? Um, there's a reverse. There's a mission to So neon lights. If you excite a gas, it can emit photons of very specific frequencies. Hmm. And for neon lights, different elements produce different colors. Neon produces, if I remember correctly, kind of a deep red. Hydrogen gives a pale red. Uh, Krypton gives a blue. I mean, if you just imagine, you know, yeah. imagine your head when you see neon lights. All the colors are different gases because it's – and if you took a spectrograph and looked at them, you would see a bunch of lines of different colors. And the average color of all of it is what your eye sees. Yeah. Basically, you know. Heavily simplified, but uh, that's what the Sloan telescope does. It's more powerful than pictures because you can find out what something's made out of, and even more than that, because uh, light, when it interacts with things, can be affected by a process called Doppler shift. So if something's moving towards you, yes, the light gets compressed; it becomes yes. blue shifted. If it's moving away from you, it gets red shifted. Uh, but more than just movement will do that. You can tell, oh, someone's moving towards us or this or away from us at some speed. But you can also get broadening <clears throat> of the lines. The quickest way to think about this is you have a gas that's absorbing some light, right? It's producing one of these lines that you see. But if it's hot, all of those atoms are moving around frantically. Some of them are moving towards you. Some of them are moving away from you. And if you average that out, this sharp line will become wider. And the hotter it is, the wider it gets. Gravity also does the same thing. If you have yeah. a lot of pressure, because your surface gravity is high, you also get a broadening of a different shape. So that's how you can distinguish between some of these different things. Um, and so for my machine learning model, I actually use the temperature, which you can get from the color, too. So you can look at what was the max color. If it's redder, it's cooler. If it's bluer, it's hotter. Uh, I take the pressure broadening, the width of the lines, that tells you the surface gravity and gives you an estimate to the size of a star. And what the elements are in the first place, is it all hydrogen and helium or is there some amount of carbon and oxygen and other things? You take all of those and I use machine learning to predict the brightness of a star. Basically, how bright is it intrinsically? Not how oh. bright it appears. What you can do is if you know how bright it actually is, you can compare that to how bright it appears. Yes. And now you have a distance or an estimate to the distance. Thank you, inverse square law. Exactly. <laughs> There's a lot more complications because you have to take, you have to factor in this thing called extinction. Uh, empty space is extinction. actually not completely empty. There's dust that actually floats between the stars and, and it gets really annoying, but you, you can account for that. So <laughs> a little bit more complex. Thank you, in general, that's what it does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> complicating yeah. observations In since there has been telescopes. So Sloan yeah. has been... Hey, I got a question for you. Uh, so what's this yeah. new telescope we're building that's super big? Uh, and they have to polish There's the There's multiple. Mirror. There's multiple ones? What, what about the one in Hawaii? What is that called? We're building. So the one that's planned for Hawaii is the 30-meter telescope. They started construction, and but they're on a pause right now. Why? Um, it's going to be 30 meters in diameter, which is huge I know. for context. That one's three and a half. Yeah. <laughs> I really can't wait for them to release the um, first images. I'm still waiting. But there's two <clears throat> more being built. Uh, one's actually halfway done. It's called the Giant Magellan Telescope. It's only 27.8 20, meters What's your favorite in diameter. It's like, oh, Why no, it's two less than the 30 meters. But, oh, my God, it's still huge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, halfway space. done. Space. The really? mirrors are polished. They're nice. actually underway. Oh, right really? Now, or they were until sort the of pandemic. Finally. Right? Um, but uh, it's the, the thing is, first light, which is our term for opening of observ observatory, that's not going to happen for like four more years because yeah, it's, it's hard yeah. to build. Um, we're, trying to, we're trying to polish those mirrors still on the Hawaii one. No, they um oh for for the thirty meter, I think they started mirror production, but they're still going. Um, uh. 
Techno, techno, look at me, look at me real quick. I'm gonna do something cool. Watch this. Just check what time it is. Okay. No, just, just, just look very close. I might, I might actually just, be going just, here soon. No, but, no. Um, yeah. Hold on. Just, just, anyway, yeah, just, those, those will be uh, built within this next decade. It's gonna be I'm, uh, pretty quickly, cool. Boom. But one, oh, uh, one last thing I wanted that? to mention on the Sloan yes. telescope. I, 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 so I there was a survey a few years ago um, oh, about the most productive science facilities in the world. I'm so basically, fire in my, that places hey, dude, dude. where <laughs> they produce huge amounts of useful Ancient data. fucking meme, and yeah. I appreciate so that. So <laughs> some of the top contenders are like CERN, the Large Hadron Collider. There's uh, a laser. You have the Hubble Space Telescope, right? Space. The oh, number shit. one was the telescope. Oh, that's shit. The Sloan Digital Sky <laughs> Survey was number one. For science That's production, I didn't know Space Corps could do that. That's cool. And, and like, if I remember correctly, it just beat out CERN, <laughs> which which is the large, you know, the large hadron oh, collider. Wait, yeah, because uh, that thing produces a lot of data. <laughs> Interesting. I am actually learning a lot from you right now. If you're a core, this is just disturbing. Yeah, I highly, I'm about to leave here in a moment, but I highly okay. recommand just look up, look at pictures of the Patrick Point Observatory. Hey, you have a YouTube. Or if you want more specific ones, you can look up the Sloan, you know, SDSS, Sloan Digital Sky Survey at APO. Yeah, yeah but it's way. Hey, the telescope actually looks a little weird. Huh? You have a YouTube? Do you have a YouTube?